this is sort of like the big deal, what holds everybody back, what makes everyone nervous. It's like that fear factor is the recovery um, and just sort of what to expect. So we're gonna sort of break it down for you because it's really not something you should be scared about, right? Hi guys, welcome to Lipstick and Lipo, your unfiltered guide to plastic surgery. I'm Dr. Smitta, board certified plastic surgeon in New Jersey, and I've got Dr. Amalfi with me, my co-host up in Rochester. Hi girl, how are you? Hi Smitta, I'm great. Welcome everyone to Lipstick and Lipo. We're so glad to have you. Guys, we are continuing our series on mommy makeovers, and we are going to be talking about the recovery today. So this is sort of like the big deal, what holds everybody back, what makes everyone nervous. It's like that fear factor is the recovery um, and just sort of what to expect. So we're going to sort of break it down for you because it's really not something you should be scared about, right? No, not at all. And that's why you're here. That's why you're listening. So you kind of like know what it's about. You're not scared. You just plan in your plan and you're yeah. ready. And just like anything else in your life, that's kind of like, something that's a little bit hard to overcome. The more you plan and the more you're prepared, the better mm -hmm. ready you're going to be to just kind of get through it and get on the other end of it. And we promise no one gets to the other end and says it wasn't worth it. Nobody ever does that, guys. Like, and we've done this, we've done these surgeries a lot and nobody has ever regretted it. So that should give you some sort of peace of mind. You can do it. You've done hard things. You've probably had kids. You've been through so many crazy things in your life and you've come out the yeah. other side stronger. This is no different and it's exciting. So, you know, yeah. we're going to kind of give you a timeline here to mm -hmm. help you plan. Um, and then, and honestly, I think that the patients who plan, you know, kind of think about what the daily struggles are going to be, what kind of help you need, what kind of things you mm -hmm. want ready ahead of time that's going to make you, you know, set up for success. So you're going to just kind of exactly. through this and then you'll look back and be like, yeah, that was nothing. Yeah, and I yeah. look amazing. Piece, piece of cake. Right. And now it's done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all so right. So let's talk about the yes. timeline. Yeah. Yeah. What let's are like the, the hardest timeline. days? Mm -hmm. Like, what would you, what do you tell people are like, okay, these are your rough couple of days. Yeah. So I usually tell people the first two or three days, are going to be the worst. I mean, I know, do you, you do you use um, Expiral also? Exactly. Yes. I use yeah. long acting. So, so that's like a long yeah, acting so numbing agent. Yeah. So, I mean, we do everything that we can on our end to make sure that those days are going to be the most comfortable for you, you know, meaning we give you certain medications during your, you know, anesthesia that help with the recovery. We actually inject a long lasting, um, essentially numbing medication, um, and sort of block those nerves and that lasts for, you know, a couple of days. So we do these things, but despite that, I mean, it's a, it's a big surgery, right? You have your breast operated and your tummy operated, uh, on, um, and I use, it's a lot of areas. It's a big surface area. You, you know, you can't really move freely because of the tummy tuck. Um, so the first two or three days are going to be rough. Um, but then it gets better. But I usually tell patients, listen, and I, I actually say this to them. I'm like, you're going to hate me the first week after surgery. You'll hate me. You wish you you didn't do it. And the reason why is be it's not necessarily the pain, right? That sort of gets better after the first couple of days. Um, it's just annoying. It's just everything, right? You're not sleeping well because you have to sleep on your back. If you're not a back sleeper, you're not sleeping well. If, you know, you're on pain medications, you're probably going to get constipated, you know? So it's like not sleeping, not going to the bathroom. You can't really move around. Yeah. Hard to do stuff you're for yourself. Puppy, you're you're asking for help. Yeah. yeah. Everything, everything's um, just annoying. Um, doable, yeah. but you need a lot of help. And I, and I mm -hmm. think that's hard for some women too. Like, I think we're not good at needing help Asking in the first couple of help. days, the first couple of days, you're going to need help. Honestly, the first week mm -hmm. you're going to need help. Week, the first, at least. Yeah. yeah. And the week is kind of like the turning point, like seven mm -hmm. to 10 days, depending on my patients is when they kind of like turn the corner and they go yeah. from it being like pretty bad to being like, okay, 
I can tolerate it. I can do it. I'm learning how to sleep. I'm learning how to like Mm -hmm. take naps and how to get out of bed and how to take a shower. And like, you kind of get a little rhythm to all of the accommodations essentially that you're making in your, in your day. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I think like the biggest turning points, right. The first night that they actually sleep through the full night, right. That, that usually happens towards the end of the, you feel like a brand new person. The first time you like hop in the shower and wash your hair also helps. Um, and then when those drains, if you go to the bathroom and how to, you know, bowel movement, it makes a big deal. So these all kind of seem silly, but you do make that turn. And that's really in that first, towards that end of that first week, seven to 10 days. But then we also use drains. I use drains. Um, I know you do too, right? Yeah. And they can Um, be in for a while, like weeks. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, that's just another annoyance factor. They're not awful. Sometimes they pull and they pinch and they're not comfortable, but they're really annoying. And so they're, they're annoying. They're annoying. They're a nuisance. It's hard to go to the bathroom. It's hard to shower. It's hard to get dressed. You know, it's, Mm -hmm. I mean, we just don't, it's just not a normal part of our daily life. So when you have those for the first couple of weeks, that's, that's kind of annoying as well. And when you start to get those out, even when you just get one out, it's just one less thing to think about. And so that's when I think people start to see the light at the end of the tunnel because then Mm -hmm. stuff starts getting a little easier. You start to like resume some normal um, function. And then as like all the surgical stuff starts stripping away, then you start feeling more and more like yourself. And I would say that as like you approach that three week mark, I think that's kind Mm -hmm. of like a magical time. Yeah, I a thousand percent agree. I mean, and that's usually what coincides with both of the drains coming out, you know, Usually one drain will come out a little bit sooner than the other, maybe depending on how much is coming out. But once those drains are out, you're walking up, like you're upright, right? You're sleeping, you're, you're kind of getting back into your normal routine. Um, and that's really when you sort of, or you start seeing your results because some of the swelling is getting better. The bruising's getting better. The muscles are sort of like happy in their new place after being tightened. Um, and so then you start to sort of see the results like coming, you know, developing. Um, and then that's where you start getting excited and you're like, Oh, like, I, you know, I don't have this overhanging skin anymore. You know, like my breasts are actually up here instead of down here, you know? So all of those things sort of, you start seeing the full picture a little bit, or a little bit yeah. better. You start wearing more than just sweatpants and then you put your pants on and you're like, Oh wow. Like, yeah. This just feels a little bit looser and the bruising looks good. And um, you know, my breasts are settling or I'm wearing a real shirt. And, you know, it's just like all these little things that start to get like really exciting. And then I would say the next phase of mommy makeover is really exciting because it's like all the mm-hmm. things that you thought it would be. And then it's so many things that you didn't even think would be better are better. And little yeah. things all day, every day are just making you like so excited that you just went through this and you did this for yourself. And that confidence just like grows um, mm-hmm. leaps yeah. and bounds in that next month. And then you right, get exactly. activity too, right? Like for some mm-hmm. people, it's like going back to the gym and work and things like that, that make them feel normal. Right. And that happens. Yeah. That happens, right? That happens between like your four and six week mark, probably more, you know, more towards your six week mark, but then you're, you're going back to working out. A lot of us, I know for me, that's like a big stress reliever to work out. And so you haven't been able to do that for six weeks. So just getting back out there, um, you just feel like yourself again. And, um, I think that's really going to be like the huge turning point. And you have to still remember, you know, I think I always tell my patients like six weeks, you know, that kind of thing, but you're still going to be tired, right? Like your, your body has gone through a lot, right? So you might do things that you didn't even have to think twice about. Um, and then now after surgery, you get winded, it's tiring and that's okay. You just kind of have to work your way back up to what you were doing before and give yourself a little grace, Um, but, uh, you're going to get there. And when you do, you're going to wish you had done it sooner, just like all of our other patients. Yeah. I, I mean, absolutely. So, I mean, I think the biggest point we want, you know, when we talk about a timeline recovery is don't be intimidated by the timeline. Mm -hmm. You know, this is short term in the grand scheme of the rest of your life. And so it is just like a short little hurdle to overcome, to recover for feeling confident and your best self for the rest of your life. And so 
be prepared, understand kind of how those weeks are going to change, what you're going to need at home support wise to get you through them, set yourself up for success. And uh, Mm -hmm. we promise this timeline will fly by and you're going to have amazing results that you get to enjoy forever. So this is your time to be selfish, guys. Worth it, yes. So (laughs) your time to be selfish. We'll get into more about like how to prepare and things like that. But you know, for the most part, just have a big, broad idea of what that you know first two months looks like, and you'll be ready to go. You're gonna have amazing results. Find a board certified plastic surgeon. Mm -hmm. Make sure you get that dialogue going, and then. Honestly, I would say check out the rest of the series on mommy makeover and your specific procedures so that you're prepared and ready um, for your recovery and amazing results. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you next week. This is fun, Ash. I'll see you later. See you, girly. Take care, guys. See you soon. Bye.